Welcome to your next installment of Ubuntu for Newbies. Today we're going to be talking about Unity, or Unified Unity, or however you want to say it. I personally don't like Unity. Um, I, it, to me, it just doesn't work well, but I, I've kind of figured out why. I've said in the past, I understood why you, uh, Ubuntu and Cardinal was going to this stuff. They're trying to make a one system for all systems. They're trying to make everything from touchscreen for pads to phones to the new Ubuntu TV and then to the desktop with Unity. And they're trying to make it all work together in one. Um, and like I said, and from the beginning, I said, I understand. But for a desktop, this kind of sucks. So I've been using the old uh, version or the old desktop, which, which has the applications menu and the places menu, everything up here in the top left corner. Um, but I created a video a week ago about uh, Ultimate Edition 3.4 and how it gives newbies the, the chance to look at everything, uh, be exposure, exposure, exposure to all the different types of desktops, blah, blah, blah. And from then I decided, you know what, I'm going to use nothing but Unity for one week and I'm going to figure this out. Because if this is what Ubuntu is going for, and I'm a Ubuntu guy. I really do enjoy Ubuntu. It works very well. I just didn't like the Unity interface. I need to get used to it. Plus, I started checking out Ubuntu 12.10, uh, the beta releases that came out. And there's some things that they're doing with Unity that make it a little bit better and easier to do. Um, we're not going to cover those right now. We're just looking at the Unity basics. This is going to be the Unity boot camp for all. And we're going to look at the Unity website and some other stuff. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look. Um, what is Unity? Unity is a range of technologies bringing simplicity, power, integration to both users and application developers. Unity puts design, integration, and free software at the heart of delivering a powerful and attractive experience. And this is uh, unity.ubuntu.com, and you can get in here and you can look through all their different projects and things like that. Uh, some of the projects they got going on. Um, for Unity, application indicators, and the Notify on-screen display, uh, everything they've got going on. Uh, today we're going to be looking at, of course, Unity, so let's go ahead and check out this Unity. Um, and this basically just gives you a complete and simple touch-ready environment that integrates your applications, your workflow, blah, 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 and just tells you all this stuff. The other thing that I've noticed is that there's two types of computer desktop computer users, those that use basically just the mouse, which is me. I like to lay back, take my mouse, go where I want to go, do what I want to do, and hardly ever touch my keyboard until I'm ready to actually input some data or some information or create something. Then you have those that are very productive, the developers, the people that do all that stuff, that love using the keyboard and do things quickly and produce and produce and produce and just, you know, Twitter and Google Plus and just produce, produce, produce. And so what you, Ubuntu did was to integrate for touchscreen and do all this other stuff, they created a desktop environment that basically just uses the keyboard. Instead of having to be able to touch the screen and go where you want to go, you now just use the keyboard. Um, so what they try to do is bridge that gap between desktop and touchscreens which is not a bad idea. Uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Windows 8, but on a pad or a touch screen, Windows 8 works pretty good. You try to put that on a desktop and where you try to do things with the mouse and there's really, I mean, it is a piece of crap. So one of the things they're counting on is that people are gonna revolt against Windows for desktops and try to find some other distro. Um, they're either going to stay with Windows 7 or they're going to find something else. And Ubuntu is trying to make where it bridges the whole thing where if you have a pad, a Ubuntu pad, a Ubuntu phone, Ubuntu TV, and then Ubuntu itself, it'll all work the same. People won't have to figure it out and it'll just work. It's a brilliant idea. So I'm not upset with them. I personally still don't like Unity for my desktop, but that's because I love my mouse. So let's take a look at some of the, let's go ahead and minimize this. Keyboard shortcuts, how does it work? Where does it all come from? First is you have, let's see if I can get this up here for you. The Windows key right here. 
It's either on your keyboard, it'll be Windows, or it'll be a command key, CMD. On um, 95, 99% of the, of the stuff. You push and hold that down, and it's going to open up this little keyboard shortcuts menu, and it's going to tell you, uh, open up the launcher, uh, what you can do, how do you do it, all with the keyboard shortcuts. And this right here tells you how things are done. Like I said, and then if you look over here, you'll see you have a one, two, three for your uh, quick launch items that you can actually do real fast. Um, so if you just push the command key and press one, it'll open up your folders real quick, real quick, easy. Instead of just having to go all the way over here with your mouse, open it up and get to it. Then uh, if you push down the command key here, the, one of the drawbacks that I saw is from here, if you're using the command key, there's nothing you can really open. I don't see any shortcut icons, nothing like that. But if you push and release the command key or the Windows key, it'll open up your uh, HUD, I guess is what they call. You'll see your recent applications and recent files, and then you'll see this is a home screen. Uh, this is your, let's go click on it, this is your applications. Now you can go ahead and click on the filters and go through and figure out what you want. Or you can, this is all your installed apps. Let's see if I can get this to scroll quickly. Then on the bottom is available apps for download. So, and you can get to it all from there. Now the other way of course is just click on it and then let's say I'm looking for Banshee, just type in ban and there, Banshee, click the enter button and it opens right up or opens up so hit the command key let it go open up your hud type in what you're looking for and it'll open it up for it it's quick and easy type in say chrome there's chrome enter it opens up so that keeps you from having to go here to here right, let me get rid of all this then scroll down to the C's, there's Gmail crackers, Chrome, and then click on it and then open it. So it takes it a little bit longer just to use your mouse, but like I said, if you use just your keyboard, it's a lot faster. Um, the other ones you got here, uh, this doesn't come standard. This is a Evernote uh, reader. If you have Everpad, if, through Everpad, this is your Ask, which doesn't come, I installed these. Files and folders, this does come on. This gives you your quick files and folders. So once you get, if you, if you want, um, let's say you wanted to open up your music folder. All right, so let's say you open it up, just type in music, arrow down a few times, music, and it opens the folder. So that's how you do it, just using your keyboard. Um, let's see, and then this right here is an image preview or a file name if you're trying to find something your music collection if you have music it'll it can show up here your videos collection and it gives you a list of online items also um, now the one thing that 12.10 is doing is they're giving you uh, search results and Amazon search results at the same time so if you're looking for a video from your home screen, let's say you're looking for Avengers. You hit enter and there's no matches. Well, it's going to actually show you Amazon and it's going to start giving you all the different movies in Amazon with the Avengers stuff on it. And it's going to allow you to be able to order it and stuff through there. Um, I myself think it's okay. It works fine. It's a way for them to raise some money to make things better. I have no problem with it. If people order things off Amazon, they can order it through here, support Ubuntu. I don't think it's a problem. There's a lot of people who do have problems with it, um, but I don't. Now, these right here, this Evernote and the Ask, and this right here is an uh, adult searching thing porn type stuff. I installed it just checking it. Uh, but these are all different lenses that you can get for Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the lenses that are available for Unity and Ubuntu. You've got the Ask Ubuntu, which of course is this one. <clears throat> then you got, this is a calculator. You can actually open it up and just 
type in calculations. Still testing it, but still, it's a little quick little calculator. Google Books, if you uh, do a lot of reading using Google Books and stuff, you can have a Google Book lens. Um, uh, this is Ubuntu Cities and Cityscope. Get you your map and time and weather and all the other stuff that's from the cities all around the world. Uh, Unity Music Lens. Uh, of course, this lens uses whatever that is to search music played on your computer and display it in the lens. Google Documents. If you use Google Documents, you can put this lens on and have access to your documents straight from the HUD. Instead of having to open up Google, go to Google Docs, then try to figure it out. Uh, of course, this is the adult lens I was telling you about. Uh, web search lens. Uh, you can search uh, blah, 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 just about anything, basically. It's a web search. Uh, Gwibber, uh, which is the instant messaging slash everything uh, broadcasting, whatever you need, and it'll all come up here. There's your posts and replies and images and everything. You can come off Facebook, off of whatever else you want to use. Um, YouTube lens, re-edit lens, Pirate Bay torrent lens, which for those of us who use torrents, this is a good way to search without having to open up Pirate Bay or open up your browser. Um, recoil lens, Tommy Boy Notes lens, Wikipedia lens, Unity graphic design lens, SSH search, so if people understand what SSH is, that's where you can connect to different uh, desktops or, de or computers and stuff like that. Groove Sharp music uh, lens, cooking lens, so if you're a big cooking person, you can search in for recipes and it'll bring it up for you. Uh, Unity calendar lens, so if you have a whole bunch of different calendars from Google or Hotmail or whatever, personal and whatever, you can all do it right there. Bliss lens, notifications, basically looks like a folder, I'm not sure. Um, then dictionary lens, Unity new lens, lens oh, news. Uh, anyway, just tons, of, you see there's just tons and tons of different types of lenses that you can use. More lenses in all these other different places. And you can just go through and like I said, install whatever you want. So we're gonna let's say we're gonna install the torrent lens real quick. Um, let's go back to this one. I think this one's better. Let's go. So of course this is on askubuntu.com. You can just basically copy this one first. Open up a new window. Paste, enter, type in your password, enter, and you want to install the PPA, yes, hit enter, and then it'll go through that process of installing the PPA. Then copy the next line, paste it, enter, and it'll go through the process of update, updating Ubuntu first. Which is what it says here, sudo update, then sudo app get installed, Unity Scope Pirate Bay, which it'll do after it finishes the update. So from what I can figure that they are doing is they are trying to limit the applications you need to open up so you can do everything quickly from the HUD. So you don't have to worry about open up a web browser to search for torrents, open up a web browser to search for things on Amazon, open up the web browser to do mostly anything. You don't have to, uh, you know, go to ask.com or evernote.com or all these other things. You can basically try to do it all from the HUD. Like I said, still not a big fan. 12.10 looks promising. The other thing 12.10 can do is if you go to your applications and where it says available, available for download, if you right click on it, excuse me, let me get rid of that, sorry about that. If you right click on it in 12.10, it's gonna give you a description and then it's gonna give you the option to install it or not. You don't have to open up Ubuntu Software Center. It is going to allow you to install it straight from the HUD. Ubuntu Software Center is great. It's a little slow, but it's great. 
has a lot of different things in there. But now you can get rid of the slow things. You just do it through this right here. Let's say you wanted to install uh, was it Zorion, I think. Um, let's say chess game. You got different chess games now you can do. Um, let's say web web stuff, empty web browser, NetSurf web browser, all these different things for browsers. And you can, like I said, click on it, install it on 12.04, and you can install it in Ubuntu Software Center, but in 12.10, you'll be able to install those straight from the HUD, which I think is a great thing. So, now let's take a look, uh, see if this is done. Files have downloaded, good. Let's open up the HUD and see if it is not there. The torrent browser is not there. Um, I'm going to log out, log back in, and see if I can find it for you. Give me one second. Okay, so now we have logged out and restarted our computer. So if we go to our HUD, now you'll see a little torrent icon here. And let's say you're searching for something. You can now search for it and get more results. And hopefully, you know, download it from here. Instead of having to open up the browser, search for it, all the other stuff, you can search right from here. Now, I am in no way condoning illegal practices of, you know, content that you shouldn't be getting. Use torrents responsibly. Download, like, stuff that you can use, not the stuff that you shouldn't. Um, now, back to the 12.10. With the addition of the Amazon stuff right here. Uh, Mark Shuttleworth at markshuttleworth.com uh, has put out a question and answer of why Amazon search results in the dash. And you can read it and see what his take is on it and things like that. You can also go back to his website and you can look at all the other archives and different stuff. Uh, you know, his take on the Azure stuff. Uh, cloud day and read all about it like I said this is the guy that basically runs Ubuntu so you might want to get used to seeing what he thinks and why he thinks the way it is now so we've got unity how to use the how to use the HUD how to use your keyboard like I said push and hold the command key or Windows key pops up with all your different stuff, switch between applications, switch uh, current applications, move focus, workspaces. If you hold, hit super S, it'll open it up, go back. If you wanna switch to it, uh, other ones, you know, control, alt, cursor keys. So control, alt, arrow over. You can see it opens up like that. You can quickly switch between desktops. And like I said, and the more I use Unity, the more I get used to using Unity, okay, but still kind of, I don't know, fuzzy. Um, so that's how you actually use Unity. Now I'm going to look at how do you actually uh, toy around with the Unity bar over here and get it to look the way you want. So we're going to open up system tools or settings. Enter. And you're going to have, you well, since this is uh, Ultimate Edition 3.4, I have a Ubuntu Tweak. Um, but the way you do it without the Ubuntu Tweak is you just go to Appearance and go to Behavior. And now you can say, do you want to auto-hide? Yes, I do. That puts it away. Sensitivity, do you want it to be left side, left corner? Uh, if you go back to look, down here in the bottom, lock your icon size. Let's go ahead and make this unhide so I can show you this. Icon size, you can make it as big and as little as you want. And behavior, you can hide it. Hit OK. Now, supposedly you're supposed to be able to take your mouse over here and it's supposed to pop up. Takes a little while. Me, just hitting the command key, or yeah, hit the command key. It opens it up and no problem. Um, now, Let's say you don't want this LibreOffice Impress on here. You can right click and you can unlock from the launcher. Boom, it goes away. Let's say you want Chrome. 
So just type in Chrome, open it up. Oh, there it is. Once it pops up, right click on it, uh, lock to the launcher. Come back up. And there you go. Now, haven't yet figured out how to move these into the directions of what I want, but that's how you set this up to be your quick launch bar. And you can hold down and then now you got your numbers. Now, of course, the smaller you make this, the harder the numbers to see. So you'll have to play with that and make it do whatever you want it to do. But again, get used to using the keyboard shortcuts. That's gonna make your life in Unity a lot better is if you're using keyboard shortcuts. So get used to using those and how those work out. And then Unity can be more user friendly to us. Again, I'm not a keyboard guy. So I don't like Unity at all. So what do you do if you don't like Unity, but Ubuntu doesn't get come installed or anything else? Well, they have made it simple and easy to uh, go back to the default, uh, the Ubuntu Classic, or however you want to say. Open up your software center, and it'll open up and type in GNOME-Panel. And this gives you your GNOME Classic look. Uh, no screenshots available. But anyway, the GNOME panel is an essential part of GNOME desktop, providing toolbar-like panels, blah, blah, blah. And this will set you up with your panel on top, your panel on bottom, just like it used to. See, I've already got installed because I don't normally use Unity. But that's how you install the GNOME Classic now. They do that instead of taking up space on their actually install uh, system or the install when, uh, their ISO so it doesn't have so much space. So they took that away. Makes it quick and easy for you to install it and go to GNOME Classic look anyway. So, so I showed you tech tips and techniques of how to use Unity using the keyboard shortcuts and how all that works. I showed you the different lenses and how to install them. So now you can go and you can search and you can find things that make your life easier with using Unity. I showed you how to use the GNOME panel or install GNOME panels to go back to the Unity uh, Ubuntu Classic version. Um, like I said, 12.10 has some pretty interesting innovations for you for Unity. Uh, a lot of their stuff that's coming out, of course, is centered around Unity. And like I said, I understand. I'm not knocking them. Like I said, it, they've got to do what they got to do to try to make an all-in-one system for the future and I get it I have no problems as long as they never take away my GNOME class or GNOME panel ability GNOME classic ability I'll be fine with them again I'm a mouse user and that's what I like so hope you enjoyed your quick tutorial on uh, a bunch of unity and how to use it or excuse me unified unity and how to use it and how to set it up and everything like that hope you enjoy talk to you next time